Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? This week, my special guest is Marianne Rodini Spencer, and I'll be sharing an excerpt from my latest release, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diaries Seasons. And I'll also be sharing a recipe from the Riviera. So stay with me. As promised, I wanted to share an excerpt. It's a summertime excerpt from my latest book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diary Seasons. And you know, the book is divided up into four chapters. Each chapter is about a season. And uh, each chapter has excerpts from that season with, of course, recipes. And you know, I just wanted to mention, I also do have another book release that should be out on Amazon and Kindle very shortly. I did the English translation for an award-winning Italian book that in English is titled How Wine Changes Lives. And it's by award-winning Italian journalist, Laura Donadon. So you can look for that book. It's very interesting, has some really interesting stories about small family wineries in Italy. It's a a really interesting book. And as promised, here is my excerpt. This is from, you know, the, the book is divided into diary entries. And this is an entry for Let's see, it was an entry for a June 27th. And this is titled Spaghetti and the Riviera. Recently, friends and I made a trip along the Riviera by car. I can describe this trip with memories of vivid blues and greens that I've never seen before. And of course, there was the food. My favorite souvenirs from my trips are my recipes. So I'll share with you my souvenirs, as always, but especially to experience the true taste of the Riviera, always use the freshest ingredients. This is a popular recipe served along the Riviera in the summertime. It's called spaghetti al fresco, Riviera style. One pound of spaghetti. You can use dry or fresh pasta if you'd like. One pound of fresh tomatoes, one celery heart, four anchovies packed in olive oil, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. It should be extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. One tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Boil the tomatoes for one minute. Peel, remove the seeds and cut into small cubes. Place the olive oil in a pan and heat until warm. Place in the anchovies and stir until they have dissolved. Add in the crushed tomatoes, stir, remove from heat and cool. Cook the pasta until al dente. And uh, if you need to know how long the pasta should cook, well, if it's a dry pasta, look at the pocket package directions for proper cooking time. Drain the spaghetti and place under cold running water while still in the colander for three seconds. Drain off all the water and place the pasta in the pan with the sauce. Sprinkle on the lemon juice and a twist of freshly grated white pepper. Toss the spaghetti, add in the chopped celery heart, and toss again. Place on a serving plate and serve immediately. Eat this outside, preferably by a body of water, and serve with a glass of Montepulciano or Chianti. You know, that's so you have a Riviera staycation. And you know, many people don't think of eating pasta dishes for the summertime, but uh, this is a very popular dish along the Riviera, especially in the summertime. Hope you enjoy, and remember, this is for my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Diaries Seasons, and you can find that and more recipes on marialiberati.com, or you can find the book also at artoflivingprimamedia.com, and you can certainly find it also on Amazon, Kindle, and almost anywhere books are sold online. I am really excited 
that we have a special guest, Marianne Rodini Spencer, who is not only a best-selling author, he's a screenwriter and producer also. Marianne, thank you so much for for uh, sharing all of these wonderful stories I know you're going to share with us with my listening audience. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's great. Thank you so much for having me. And you are in California, right? You're on the West Coast. I am. So Marianne, tell us, how did your journey into writing start? You know, I love to write growing up. I would write stories um, from an early age when I could. I wanted to be working on the school newspapers, and I did. And although I really didn't pursue it uh, until much later, I when I was growing up, I really worked in the theater. I loved working behind the scenes. I, I was an acting apprentice, but I also worked on props and costumes. And that was something that my mom got me interested in because I was bored during the summers. I was too young to work. Mm -hmm. And they had a wonderful theater group at the junior high and high school. And I did that all through junior high and high school and pursued it uh, for two years after that while I in the summers during college. And then I changed my major. Um, I wanted, I started getting very curious about how productions were mounted. So I became a film and television major. And I loved it. I just loved it. And I was doing a little bit of writing then, but mostly producing, directing, putting together projects. But I always kept my hand in writing. And when I moved to California after graduation, I became a writer producer. I had to take a writing test. I remember that for cable news network and I was hired and I was a writer producer. And during that time, one of my associates was doing a lot of magazine writing and we started doing articles together. And then that led me to do more magazine writing and production. And I knew at some point I wanted to write a book. That was a dream of mine to always write a novel. And I, I also wanted to do cookbooks. Um, and but again, it took it was a progression. And I think I was very busy, you know, working, making a living. I was writing every day as a producer. And then when I went into public relations, I used my writing there too. And then it was it, when I started really figuring out Hollywood and how am I going to make movies? That was my goal when I was a kid. And I'm like, okay, so I'm here in Hollywood. Now, how do people really do it? And I, I had to. It was a process to learn and see because each person has their own story. But mine was learning that I had to find a property and create a script from that property or create an original script. So that's I started um, doing that kind of work um, besides my TV writing for a, a, a series or a show. I knew that that was the step to getting a movie made or my own screenplay done. But I had produced quite a lot of other movies and helped put together productions for a number of other studios before I actually said to myself, okay, enough's enough. I'm tired of doing everyone else's movie. I want to do my own stories. <laughs> and so it really came out of that. And um, a friend offered me a book. She said, Marianne, I know you're going to love this book. And it was uh, James Michael Pratt book the lost valentine oh okay so i read it and i i said james i love this story i want to write it as a screenplay let's do it so we did our deal and um the rest is history because yes a movie with betty white for hallmark hall of fame yes yes so tell us that was leading to my next question <laughs> so what any you know what was it like to work on that pro project and what have you learned through that process sure it was I learned that it takes a village. <laughs> um, and, and I'll tell you why. Because I, while I wrote the script um, and I have a production company, I formed associations with other people. We were, we were pitching different projects together because sometimes different people have different contacts and you really have to use those contacts. Um, out of my public relations work, I had met someone and I at a, at a Hollywood event and I said, you I heard, overheard him say, we want family entertainment. So I said, you know, I'm working on a script right now. I'd love to pitch it when I'm done. Can I do that? He said, sure, send it along. So it kind of led to that. And then working in association with that group, we pitched it to Hallmark Hall of Fame. And, and they had a deal with CBS at the time. So 
but it took a while. Uh, we did our deal, but they it took about two or three years before they actually produced it into a wow. movie. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a long time yes. to make a project. So you have to work on multiple projects because you never know which one is going to go. I'm through. And, I, you know, it's funny. I mean, you probably know this, too. I know people think things just happen quickly. You know, yeah. they don't realize you have to be very patient and, you know, wait. Just like you said, it, it took a few years. And I've heard of things taking five years, ten years even. So, you know, I remember reading something, and I do believe it was for Forrest Gump. The uh -huh. producer did an interview, and she said it usually takes 10 or 11 years. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've, I've heard that also, yes. So um, things are slow moving, but if you're patient, it's worth it. Well worth it, I guess. Yes. <laughs> so you come up with it. Sometimes it can happen faster. It quicker. just depends. You know, it really just depends. And I think now there's so many avenues um, between the internet, um, smart TVs, Hulu, Netflix, yes. you know, the networks. Um, there's so many ways a project can be mounted and shown. Uh, mm -hmm. but, and each one might have a certain particular medium. Yes. But I think the, the great part is if you're creative, you figure out what you, the story you want to tell, where it will work best. And you do work on lots of projects at the same time. Like I have probably eight uh, completed scripts wow. for different types of projects. And I am doing several projects now and p besides my books. Right. Yes. Wow. So, yes, you have to keep keep your hands kind of working on many things at yes. one time. Yes. I think that's really important for people to know also that, that want to get into um, the business. So um, I was going to ask you this and I didn't realize you were from the East coast also. So now I know from our conversation before this recording, but I'm from the East coast also. So, um, and I, you know, I know you're from the East coast. So what is it like working and living between California and Hawaii? And I have to say, I'm always on the East coast. I go back oh. quite, because I still have family there. Yes. But I love being able to go to different locations. Um, uh -huh. I love being, of course, visiting my family back East and having them come visit me. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love living in California because of not only the work, and I moved here because of specifically because of work. Right. Um, beautiful climates. You have the mountains, the ocean, the desert, and you can be in all three places within a few hours. Oh, so wow. I can literally be in the desert and go to the mountains, and then I can go to the beach. Wow. <laughs> awesome. And the weather's great. Yes. Um, Hawaii is just a love of mine. Um, if you're living in California, it's maybe five hour by mm -hmm. five hours by plane, mm -hmm. and it's so gorgeous. I I started going to Hawaii um, maybe the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with it. I I think the first island I went to was Maui, and I cried when I left. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I just got that aloha spirit into yeah. me. Oh well. So I oh, models, you know, I, I, I knew um, I, I didn't necessarily know when I first went there that I'd be writing about Hawaii in, in some, the Kate Grace mystery series. But it's just the perfect place for my books. Yes, it's it sounds like it sounds like a just amazing, amazing place um, and that you can find really interesting little little spots that are very inspirational. So what are the some of the differences? I know you have a and and you're going to tell us about it too, but a background in the culinary arts and writing. And um what are some of the differences in the way people consider Italian cooking like in California and Hawaii? Because I know the East Coast like we're really populated, especially mm -hmm. like we were talking about Boston and you know New York, Philly. Lots of very concentrated places where you can find Italian cooking, but mm -hmm. Hawaii, wow, do they have, um, they have everything you could ever want in Hawaii? <laughs> um, they they might do a little bit of a different twist. I, right. I you know, there are Italian restaurants. I've been to Italian restaurants on the islands. Yes. But I, they also do something kind of like in California, where it's fresh, farm um, table fresh. Yes. Yes. Fresh, fresh catch. Uh -huh. uh, grilled or, you know, um, done a little bit differently. A lot uh -huh. of 
ahi and mahi mahi and right okay you know they have a lot of uh, fish obviously but what i love about it is um in hawaii the soil is so rich mm-hmm. because of the lava and um just the the new soil it's just fa- fabulous and it's oh. The vegetables, the fresh vegetables at the farmer's markets, or mm-hmm. if you're going to a restaurant and have the garden fresh heirloom tomatoes and things like that, it's just so delicious. It has a wow. fat taste. And we have a lot of that in California, too. I live in Ventura County, California, mm-hmm. which is, I think it's the 10th largest agricultural center in the United States. We have lots of farms. Wow. And you can go to the farms, or you can go to the uh, farmer's markets. And yes. I think many Many states have that, and I, I really say that if you live near, just investigate, Google where you live, go to a mm-hmm. farm market. You get fabulous deals. You get to know who's growing your food. Mm-hmm. They give you recipe tips. But I kind of got into all this because um, I always wanted to write a cookbook. I did a, I did produced a lot of cooking shows mm-hmm. when I worked at CNN or segments. And I also was a life, I am a lifestyle writer. I write, I, I, for many years, I wrote a lot of lifestyle pieces and food pieces. I was a food editor for Palm Springs Life mm-hmm. uh, and wrote for them for many years on lifestyle and, and culinary. Um, I love it. It's something that I, I, I love it because I grew up in a big Italian Irish family. We love to entertain. Mm-hmm. I collect recipes. I help my mom and my grandma. And um, those are some of the things I also bring into the Kate Grace Mysteries because it's all about, in my family, it was all about food and connection. Mm -hmm. And I think that, especially now with what's going on with the COVID pandemic, I think that um, making the most of a meal with the family that you, you can see or that you're with is vital. You know, even if you do it through Zoom, if you have to do it through Zoom, but I think connections are really so important and we really have to nurture them. And I love that about Hawaii, which is why Lady in the Window is the first book in the Kate Gray series, why I wanted to place it there, because they're very big on family, Mm -hmm. Ohana, which is your immediate family, your friends, also where you work, your community, and they love to entertain. Food and entertain together is like big thing wow so that yeah that's what i was trying to say i mean i knew in hawaii i assume they did have italian food but what i guess i what i was trying to also come up with is you know how that the culture there could be fused with italian you know the italian culture italian cooking so it sounds like it's similar in that way you know that it's family it 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 sounds like they encourage family very very family oriented, very, they even have something called an ohana, which is many homes have an ohana. And what that is, is where your extended family, they either live or come to stay for a while. Uh Uh-huh. It's it's like a guest house, but most houses have an ohana. Oh, wow. That's really very, very interesting. Definitely. So what are some of your, because I know, um, you've developed recipes for some companies right for many companies any any favorites that stick out like any recipes that uh well you know i have a um on my website um uh-huh. alohawriter.com i use um okay. and you people also can go to my name i have a blog and i i cre- i where i have these recipes and over the time, it's developed a little bit differently, but I've worked with Jarlsberg, Woolrich Dairy, Benito's, Garlic Gold. I've created recipes specifically for them. Uh huh. Um, and it could be like with Garlic Gold, I, I've created some fun salad recipes with lots of fresh, crunchy vegetables. Uh huh. Benito's, I did a, a chunky guacamole mm-hmm. with like chunks of tomato um and onion in there it's yummy oh, that um, does sound good. i just you know i i work i kind of just have fun create i always created recipes growing up and sometimes i'll i'll go out to dinner or i'll read something in a magazine i'll go hmm i wonder if i tried this ingredient and put that ingredient and you know i can't i i just love creating recipes i don't know why it's well uh-huh. it's thing and it's very different than sitting at my computer yes so it's a great escape yes and it's fun I it's probably fun because you grew up doing it and it, it just you know 
when you were cooking, right, you were around family and friends. And so, right, it's inspiring. <laughs> a a feel-good. Um, it just generates a feel-good for me. Yes. And I love that, that you said it's fun because I always tell people, sometimes I think people take it too serious, you know, and putting ingredients together. And I always say, you know, you, you got to just have fun with it also. Right. So you do, and you have to taste while you go along. Yes. And, you know, if, a, if a recipe has too many ingredients or is too complicated, I will be the first to say I'm turning the page. Yes. <laughs> I like it simple, that tastes good, that is really clean, um, that tastes delicious using lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. And over time, I've even gotten away from using granulated sugars. I, I use um, fresh fruit puree substitutes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I do a lot of vegetarian, a vegan. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, I have recipes that you can add fish or meat to or choose your protein. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, I, I've really changed my style a little bit but uh -huh. it's 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 all i i like to taste i like to know what i'm eating yes like i'm eating a string bean i want to make sure i know what oh thing. yes that's really important and that actually leads to my other question i love this title the title of your pbs series simply delicious living tell us a little bit about that um and i think what you just said probably relates to that show but yes. a little bit about that show Yes, I really, I started doing that in 2010 and um, I had, I was in the Ventura County Star, vcstar.com with video and print column, uh, Simply mm -hmm. Delicious Living. And it was also on Time Warner Cable for a while. Uh -huh. Now it's on PBS in Southern California and people can watch it on my blog, but they can, I have a YouTube channel as well. You could watch on your smart TV from anywhere. Uh -huh. um, but basically it's a how-to you know, I do simple little uh, recipes that taste delicious, fresh and natural ingredients. It's all about that. My blog gets more into simply delicious living, meaning you create your recipe, whether it's food, exercise, what you're thinking. Um, I give examples of how to live sustainably, um, ideas for making, you know, a joyous connection in life. So the blog gets into a lot more. Uh, in addition to the recipes um, on screen on PBS, it's strictly me create, you know, talking about a recipe and sharing it. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then people can go to the website and print out the recipe. But I love doing that. And um, I, I just it's it's again, it's part of who I am. It's I'm I'm just driven to do it. I don't even know why. <laughs> but I guess I. I was going to say it sounds like it's part of you. So that's that's yeah. great because. Yeah you know, it's what you live and breathe your, you know, your show, it sounds like, correct? Because, you know, it's funny. Um, but I am so happy just writing my books or screenplays mm -hmm. and it being in the kitchen, cooking, creating recipes, doing my cookbooks. Um, if I just do that, those things for the rest of my life, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. I could uh, definitely relate to that. Yeah. So I know we're talking about happy and food is fun and all that, but um, how has the pandemic affected your work? Do you have any tips for my listeners on staying productive for people yes. working from home? I do. And I want to say, first of all, that, um, and this comes from doing a lot of books that take place in Hawaii and going to Hawaii, but aloha you know, people know it to mean hello, goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also something called the living in the spirit or the way of aloha, which uh -huh. is how you interact with the natural world. So it's it, it includes like um, the thoughtful and deliberate preservation of the earth, being kind to people, um, have being tolerant, compassionate, treating others with respect, like the golden rule, how you would want to be treated. And I think that... Um, that's a tip I always give for Simply Delicious Living, because I think when you are good and respectful to other people, you know, it just uplifts everybody and then it comes back to you. I really believe that if you try to understand a person and where they're coming from and you, you talk respectfully, you'll see a whole different way of interacting. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is part of it. And I think in this pandemic, we have to be respectful of one another. 
Um, I think there's a lot of violence that's going on to get a point across. I do believe there's other ways you can get your point across, other con very constructive ways mm -hmm. um, to get your point across. One um, thing that I experienced was online um, at one of our city governments had a public forum that people could join in and listen and write their comments. And they wanted to hear the, the opinions. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than being a violent thing where things are destroyed, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be constructive and work in a way where you could work with other people. Another yes. thing the pandemic, eat healthy, exercise, because you have to take care of your immune system. And what does that when you eat healthy, fresh fruits and vegetables? You know, uh, it's very simple. Um, even the, you know, there's guidelines what you should be eating every day. And I think if you keep it fresh and natural, if you if you get a box or a can, and which I highly say, try not to eat fresh. Yes. But if, if you don't know what the ingredient means that you're reading, that's a primary ingredient in what you're eating, that's a danger. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you know, with the pandemic, I think you'll agree. If you have more time to stay at home, you'll have more time to spend on exercising and kind of taking care of yourself. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people are doing that during this time period. And if you can't go to the gym, you know, you could walk in a park around your neighborhood. Um, you can there you can buy leg weights. Um, there are things that you do. I think you have to definitely take care of your body and, and yourself and also your mind. You have to surround yourself with prayer, um, affirmations of, you know, things, thinking positively, you know, um, giving gratitude every morning is a great way because it makes you mindful of your blessings. It's so easy to get depressed during this time period if you think about all the negative things. But if something's really a negative, try to get away from that. You know, it find out what's going on in the news. But, you know, if it's giving you anxiety, don't watch it all night. Exactly. And gratitude. I love that. I love that because I always say people don't realize, you know, gratitude, you, you should definitely think of that in the first thing in the morning, you should just be, you know, happy that you can eat and breathe and walk and, you know, sleep. And there are people that there are many things that people don't realize they can do, you know, that they should express gratitude for, and that will take away all that negativity. So I think gratitude yes. is such, such an important ingredient in living positively. So I definitely, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, people don't realize that. So uh, Marianne, what are some of, tell us about, I know you have a lot of exciting projects coming up. So tell us some of your upcoming projects. Sure. Um, well, Secrets of Grace Manor is the third book in the Kate Grace Mystery Series, and that will be coming out towards the end of this year. Um, I also have a screenplay for Lady in the Window, so we're pitching that. Hopefully it will be in, uh, in movie form very soon. Um, Simply Delicious Living is still happening. It's on television. <laughs> doing episodes every month and creating recipes. I'm working on a new cookbook. And, um, I, you know, th that's really keeping me busy. And I do have another idea for another book that I'm going to be working on right after um, Secrets of Grace Man uh, Manor wraps up. Uh -huh. So I'm always constantly working on my books and um, trying to get movies produced. Wow, that's definitely more than enough. So that's great. Uh, Marianne, my last question to you, because I ask all of my guests to answer this. What does food mean to you? The first thing that came to my mind is family. Food and family go hand in hand. And um, it's part of life. It's a wonderful way to connect. Um, it's for your body. Um, it keeps you healthy. Um, it's life. Great. That's great. And um, one other thing I want, um, I'm sure my listening audience is going to be very interested in looking up your blog and your TV show. So tell everybody where they can find you. Sure. The easiest way to get to me is going to alohawriter.com. Or they can just put my name in there, marianneradinispencer.com. Or... My blog, simplydeliciousliving.com, it all goes to the same place. Great. That's great. 
And uh, so this is this was Marianne Radini Spencer, best-selling author, screenwriter, and producer, as my special guest today. Thank you so much, Marianne, for being with us. Oh, it was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Yes, I stopped that. Thanks so much again, oh, Marianne. It was and so nice talking to you. And I, I, I really enjoy talking to you. And um, so we do share this a lot, like on social media. This will be posted. Usually my producer gets this um, posted on Wednesdays. So I'll send you the link. Yes, and... And we will too. We'll put it in all our media. Oh, great. That's yeah. great. That's mm-hmm. wonderful. Um, thanks again. And I'm sure, you know, I'll be um, checking out your blog also and maybe um, asking you to be on another another episode. Also, I really appreciate the And and you know what? When you come out with any of your new books, please feel free to uh, send us an email. I will. And, uh, we'll try and get you on again. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Marianne. Have a good one. Take Bye-bye. care. Okay. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show, and thanks for joining in. And a special thanks goes to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guest, Marianne Rodini Spencer. And you can find me at marialiberati.com, on Twitter at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Vimeo at Maria Liberati. On Roku, my Roku channel is The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. You can also find me on Instagram at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Twitter at Maria Liberati. And let's see, I mentioned marialiberati.com and my blog you can find at marialiberati.com. The Maria Liberati Show Com. And uh, don't forget, if you create this week's recipe that I gave, the uh, Spaghetti Riviera style, please take a picture, share it with us on social media, hashtag it, the Maria Liberati Show, and uh, we may share the picture on the website for the Maria Liberati Show, but you may win a copy of one of my books. So you'll be entered in a drawing to win a copy for one of my books. So please share the recipe. And as always, if you have any questions, comments that you'd like to share with us, please feel free to uh, share in the comment section. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.